today I'm going to be showing you how to make this kitchen work table with this handy towel rail, two opening drawers and this slatted bottom shelf. For the drawer handles I've used these lovely brass pulls which are available in my Etsy store, you'll find a link above. And the wood I've used for this project is called a Besh, and that's O-B-E-C-H-E. But do check out my Working With Wood video for other suitable um, woods that you could use for this project. And we've used a sheet wood in two different sizes and um, a strip wood for the legs. And the cutting list will follow this introduction. You'll need all of the usual tools steel rule for measuring and cutting the wood along with your craft knife and I use this Swan Morton knife with a size 10A blade always put a new blade in at the start of a project or if it begins to catch or drag along the wood that means it's becoming blunt sharp pencil for accurate marking I've used a scribe um, to shape the towel rail holders there that's just a sharp um, pointed end tool. This is actually out of an old electrical kit. It does the job perfectly. Wood glue. Um, this is my favourite as you'll know if you watch my tutorials. Bonds really quickly. It's really strong. Cocktail sticks for applying glue and removing excess glue from along the joins. And for the table I've used a cocktail stick for the towel rail. Um, paint, I've used this farrow and ball um, lichen green, lovely nice green colour. This is a um, emulsion paint, but you can use any little sample pot from your local DIY store. I've used a clear um, shoe polish wax for the top um, and the slats, gives it a lovely um, honey colour. You could use a clear um, furniture polish piece of card there just for dispensing the glue onto makes it easier to apply clamps um, and or masking tape for holding the tabletop into position while the glue dries a couple of grades of sandpaper and as you know I like to cut them into small pieces which are easy to handle I think that's everything as I said the cutting list is coming up next and then we'll get started OK, we're going to begin by attaching mouldings to the back and side pieces. So I've just dispensed some glue onto a piece of card and I'm going to use a cocktail stick to apply it. So apply the glue to the moulding and I'm using the nicest side of the wood here as the side that will be visible. It's always worth checking um, that you, you've got the nicest side facing forward. I'm just applying glue here along the back and then attach the moulding so it sits flush with the top of the side piece and so there's no overhang at the edges and then just use your finger to make sure that that's flush along that top edge and then I'm using a second clean cocktail stick just to remove the excess glue and the remaining moulding and again I'm applying glue to the side that has a little chunk out of the side or out of one edge rather and just remove the excess glue and then when you're applying mouldings or pieces of wood to larger pieces you, you will need to secure them together otherwise when the glue dries the wood will just curl upwards and to do that I'm using pegs clothes pegs but you could use clamps I use pegs just because I've got more of them and then that piece can just be put to one side to dry
Okay, so once the glue has dried, remove the pegs and then you can just sand each piece on all sides. So just hold it against the sandpaper and sweep along in one direction. And that will just make sure that the mouldings are flush on all sides. So do that to each piece. And then take the leg pieces and make a pencil mark 9 millimetres, or if you're working in inches, that's 3 eighths of an inch from the bottom of each leg. So just make a faint pencil mark. Across each piece. And then put the legs into pairs and place a side piece and a short slat support between each set. And then apply glue to each edge of the side. And just pop that down there. Oops. And then to each end of the short slat support. And then attach the side piece so that it sits flush at the top of the leg. So the tops of each piece are flush across there. And then the short slat support so it sits just above that pencil line on the leg. That and use the lines on your um, cutting mat just to help with the placement, just to make sure it's all straight. And then attach the remaining leg, so starting at the top, and then just manoeuvre that bottom support into place. And just carefully press all of that together. Again, remove any excess glue before it has time to dry. And then just carefully slide that piece along the worktop and that can be left to dry and then you can create the second set of legs in exactly the same way. Okay, so once the side pieces are fully dried, place the piece on a sheet of sandpaper, sort of flat edge down, and just sand it in small circular motions. And I've already actually done these two, and that just gives you a lovely flush um, back edge to work with. And then you can erase um, the pencil marks we made at the bottom of the legs. Like that. And then take um, the back piece and on the flat unmoulded edge we're going to make a pencil mark down the short edge and down the centre. So just make a pencil mark at the top and bottom of the piece. And then place the ruler so it's just below those pencil lines and that just allows for the thickness of the pencil nib. And join those two up. And then the same thing again on the top and bottom pieces. And again down the shorter edge. And this is to help with the placement of the draw divide. So that, that goes exactly in the centre. And again, join those up. And now on these pieces, I just wanted to continue the line onto that front edge of the piece. And then when they're in place, we can easily um, see that the draw divide is in the correct place. So just join those up and then onto the front and back edge of the piece, like so. And then take one of your side pieces and turn it over so we're working on the flat edge and apply glue 
to one end of the back piece. And then we're going to glue this into place, it's level with the side piece that's there and at this front um, edge of the leg so that it's almost touching that side piece. Let me do it like that and then I'll show you from the top. So we're towards the front of that leg. And I'm just making sure that that's flush at the top there. I'll just leave that there for a moment and I must just show you this. This is a little squirrel who visits my workroom every day for his nuts. <laughs> he doesn't quite understand how a window works yet. Reverse. <laughs> I was where I'm going to knock him off. Move back. Good morning. Do you want to take another? No, I'll pop that one out for him so we don't get disturbed. Right, sorry about that. Where were we? <laughs> okay, we were about there. So we've glued the back piece now to the side piece. And I'll just show you from this um, top angle. So that sits at the front of that leg. So we've got the same sort of amount of leg showing at the side and at the back. And then when we come to fit the top piece, that fits to the front of the leg then. If you place that at the back of the leg, obviously you won't have a wide enough front piece. Okay. I'm just going to remove that excess glue along that join. Okay, and then take um, the top and bottom piece, same size, so take one of them and we want this pencil line so that it's on the inside, like that. So apply glue along one long edge and one short edge. I don't think I've got the camera back in quite the right place there. and then just glue that into place so that it's flush at the top of the side and back piece. And then you can manoeuvre your back piece into place. Press it up against it. Use your finger to make sure that it's all flush. And then lay the piece flat um, on your work surface. I'm just pressing all that into place. And then take the draw divide and again we're just going to apply glue to one long edge and one short edge. And then glue that into place so that it sits over that central line. So that central line will be in the middle of the piece of wood. Like that. And then you can use the line on the front of the piece there to make sure that that front edge is also in the middle. And then apply glue along the top edge of that central divide and again I'm doing it the wrong way round really I should have put the camera the other side I hope you can see what I'm doing like that and then again along one long edge and one short edge of the bottom piece And then 
then I've done the wrong short edge there. And then glue that piece into place. And again, so that it's flush with the bottom of this side piece and the bottom of the back. Just carefully press that into place. And then you can turn it round and just check that your draw divide has remained central, which it has there. It's right above the pencil mark. And this is a bit um, fiddly, so if you want to leave your top piece to dry and then leave the draw divide to dry, um, you can do that. And then when you're placing this piece, everything isn't going to move around. OK, then we want to turn it onto its side and take the long support and just apply glue to one end of each. and glue that into place at the bottom of the leg so that it's level with this support that's already there. Like so. The same with this one. square. Get rid of that glue. Okay, and then apply glue to the edges of the side. A small blob on each of these and then we can attach the remaining side so again so that the front is level with the front of the top and bottom piece and you'll have that overhang again at the back and this is where it gets fiddly because now you need to make sure that the bottom is flush with the bottom there and then it's easier if you turn it over and then manoeuvre these bottom supports into place so that they're level with that short support. Like that, and then you can just very, very carefully press all that together. And do be careful, because at this stage it's where it can all just collapse. And make sure that this piece stays flush with the bottom. And always check before your glue begins to set that everything's where you want it. And I'm just going to put that back on there and I'm just going to use some masking tape to hold all that together while the glue dries. This is just a low tack 25mm or 1 inch masking tape and you can pull it quite tightly. Make sure when you're pressing it down you don't press the top and bottom in. And I just want to put another piece around the bottom supports. Again be really careful here. And there's the basic table. And now we'll leave that to dry. And then we'll come back and cut and make the drawers. So once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, remove the masking tape. And then I've just sanded the piece on all sides um, and at the front as well and removed the pencil marks there. So that piece is now ready. And then in the cutting list I've given 
measurements for the drawers um, of what they should be if everything is placed exactly but I do advise not to cut the drawers until you've constructed this piece and that's just because if the central divide is placed um, more to one side than the other even even fractionally it will affect the size of the drawer openings so it's always best to construct the piece any piece when you're making drawers um, and then measure and cut the drawers afterwards and just bear in mind um, for example that that left hand drawer there from the side to the central divide is exactly 33 millimeters but I would always cut the front piece just fractionally shorter and that's just to allow for the glue um, and the paint it all adds width to that so always just cut the pieces just fractionally shorter than you need them and then that will give a nice um, a nice fitting drawer that opens smoothly so once you've cut the pieces for the drawers begin by applying glue along both edges of the base and then attach the side pieces and so that the front and back of the piece is flush with the base remain inside and just leave that to dry for a second do the other drawer And then just very carefully, you can you can leave these to dry for a bit longer, but just for the sake of the tutorial, I'll do them now. And just apply glue along the front and back edges. and then attach the front and back pieces again so that your sides are flush around there and then just very carefully press it all together and then that can be left until the glue has completely dried So once the glue on the drawers is completely dried, sand them just very gently on all sides. So I won't do it because it makes quite a nasty sound, but circular motions on the bottom and the top and then on all sides. And when you're doing the sides, just go along the sandpaper in one direction. Otherwise, you'll round the front edges and then try them in the opening. And that should just be a nice smooth fit and that should just tap out easily as well and if they don't just glide in smoothly just sand a little bit more but just a little at a time um, because you don't want sort of huge gaps around the edges so take one of the towel rail holders and make a pencil mark along the bottom edge five millimeters from the left hand edge of the wood mark there and then turn it onto that left hand edge and make another pencil mark five millimeters from the bottom like so and if you're working in inches that's 13 64 
of an inch and then just join up those two pencil marks with a curved line like so and then take the scribe tool which is this pointed end tool and just using it like a pencil just go over that line just to score it into the wood you don't need to go too deeply but just by doing this first it just makes it easier then to cut out with the craft knife so just go over it a few times so you've made a groove in the wood and then take the craft knife and then just very very carefully cut through the line just make the score a bit deeper at first and you can just cut through a bit at a time like that don't be tempted to sort of pull the piece away or the wood will just split so just take your time from there and then take a piece of um, fine grade sandpaper and just sort of roll it to make a, a curve or you can wrap it around the end of a, a thin um, paintbrush or something and then just sand and sand also these corners at each edge of the curve just makes it look a little bit nicer and apply glue to the edge of the towel rail and then attach it so that it sits at the back of this front leg and level with the top of the table Just make sure that's straight with the back of the leg and flush with the tabletop there. Now have a think before you attach these um, where this is going to go in the room because obviously you want to be able to see the towel so you, you might want to put it on this side it's entirely up to you or you could cut four of these and you could have a towel rail at either end, that looks nice as well but that's just something to bear in mind and the second one and then that one attaches at the front of the back leg flush on the other side if you want to use um, draw knobs rather than the brass pull handles that I'm going to use attach them now before you paint and just by making a pencil mark in the center and then drilling your hole or if you want um, painted drawers but plain wooden knobs you can attach them after you've painted like I'm going to do with the brass handles so that piece is now ready for painting and when I paint I don't paint inside the drawer openings um, otherwise that again adds to that depth of the, the opening and the drawers might not fit as snugly ok so here's my painted table and just check that your drawers still slide in and out nicely and you may need to do some sanding after you've painted um, just because it will make the drawers slightly wider I'm just going to pop those drawers out for now and I've got here the slats and we're going to fit the slats first so just take um, one of them and we need to make a cut out so that it fits around the leg so make a pencil mark 5 millimetres 
along that top long edge of the slat and that's 13 64ths of an inch just make a little mark at either end and then turn the piece and make a pencil mark five millimeters again across the short side like that and on the other end as well we're basically just cutting out a five millimeter square from each end of the slat so when cutting sections out of wood always cut against the grain first in this case that's the shorter edge so hold on to the piece and just use the tip of the knife just to cut through and then turn it and cut in the direction of the grain and the same at the other end sorry if I'm just blocking your view for a moment I just need to hold on to that side and then again and then in the direction of the grain that way and then try the piece in place just to check that it goes in nicely and that's a little bit tight so I'm just going to cut a little bit more away from this end Try it again. And still a little bit tight, so this time I'll just cut a tiny bit away from the other end, and that way it'll keep the piece even. Like so, should go this time, fingers crossed. And yes, and there's a nice, nice fit there. Oops. So, so do that with two of the slats, we've already done this other piece, and just check that they fit nicely into place. And I've just got some glue here, so apply glue along that end slat, to the top of that slat, uh, support, sorry. And you just want to put a tiny dot around that other edge. Just got a bit on the leg there. And then put the slat into place. And I'd already sanded these slats, so I used a fine grade sandpaper and went over both sides of them. And turn that round and do the same the other end. side there and then stick that one into place and just press it down against the support and just carefully remove any excess glue And then we've got an odd number of slats, so we can place one in the middle. Just get rid of that glue there. So just take your ruler and just make a pencil mark in the centre of those two slats, just so we've got an idea of where we're going next. That's 63, so just make a mark there. And turn it round and do the same on the other side. Like 
like that and then that just gives you an idea of where to place the central one so just apply a little bit of glue sort of roughly to the width of a slat over that central point and then you can put the central one into place and it will overlap the slats of the side so that they're in line with the legs at the front and back and to check that you can use a piece of wood or your ruler and just bring it up against the legs and then I just need to push that one back a little bit so just going to move that over a little bit and then you can just check again that you've got the same amount of space then either side and I haven't so I just need to go over a little bit more I think I must have moved it when I lined it up and then we've got three slats now to place either side of that one So just put a little bit of glue roughly where the slats will be doesn't matter if you um, get glue in between so we can just remove that with a cocktail stick and then again you can just put one in the centre roughly by eye and don't um, push them down yet and then if you need to move them around you can if you haven't got a very good eye you can um, you can actually measure again make a pencil mark in the middle and then in the middle of each of these side ones but I'm just sort of doing that by eye now and making sure that there's an even gap between each one and I'm just going to do that again and make sure that they're all as far over that side as they should be bit of a bigger gap there so just move it around you've got time to do this before the glue begins to set so don't worry if it doesn't look right you've got a few minutes to to put it right and then over the other side So next, take your tabletop piece and I just want to round off um, these edges at the top just to make it look a bit neater. So have a piece of um, sandpaper on your worktop and hold the piece against it at a 45 degree angle and just sweep it towards you, bringing it into an upright position as you do so. Just hold the piece of wood quite gently. And that just rounds over the edge and I think that looks nicer than just a straight edge. Just do that a few times until you're happy with the curve and then at each end as well. Keeping it sort of evenly on the sandpaper as you go. I'm going to finish that off with a fine grade sandpaper and I'm just going to sweep it over the edge and the same along the front and you can just sort of round those corners off too harshly, just very gently and then still using the fine grade sandpaper, sand the, the whole top to 
take away any roughness of the wood. Like so. And then just check that you've got a nice fit. And that will be flat against the back edge. And just a nice little overhang at either side. Less, less than a millimetre. Yep, I'm happy with the fit there. So apply glue to the tabletop. Make sure you get it onto those corners, onto the top of the legs. into place. So I'm flush against this back edge and make sure you've just got an even overhang at either side. So you can turn it upside down just to double check. Yeah, I'm happy that I've got the same amount overhang in there at either side. So just hold it into place while you remove the excess glue. And then I'm going to use masking tape to hold that into place. So piece straight over the middle and pull it nice and firm. And I'll touch it underneath there. And then where it sort of tends to rise up is at these legs at the back. So I'm just going to put a piece that way as well. And this is a low tack masking tape, so it's not going to take the paint off. that and then I'm going to use clamps along the front and then that stops any gapping once the glue's dried. Wood, wood does tend to curl upwards when the glue is drying. It tries to curl away from what you're attaching it to. So put plenty of clamps on and I'll put one more there. And that can be left for the glue to dry. So while we're waiting for the tabletop to dry, we'll attach the handles. And I'm using these brass pull handles, which I think go really nice with this style of furniture. But you could just use a wooden um, draw knob, and you could leave them in natural wood as we've done the top and slats. Or if you wanted them painted, just attach them um, before you do the painting, and you would just drill a hole centrally. Um, and apply a blob of glue and then stick those in. So make a pencil mark in the centre of the drawer front, just very faintly. Like that. And then make a pencil mark downwards and I, I place these down about five millimetres and then that will leave them central. Just a little tiny dot there. And then I use tweezers um, just because they're so fiddly. So take the pull in the tweezer. And then these can be attached actually with um, wood glue. Can't even get hold of it in the tweezer. There. And just apply a tiny amount around the curve, not right up to the edge. So, and then they've got a little um, sort of pretend screw there in the middle. So line that up with your pencil mark. And then just manoeuvre that into place. And again, if you're not very good by eye, before that glue dries, you can just measure from either side. It just needs to go over that way a tiny amount. Like 
Menf Let's glue that. Measure from the bottom as well. So it just needs to go up a little bit on that side. So again, before the glue dries, you've just got time to make some adjustments to the position until it's in the centre. So when you remove the masking tape, um, you might find that it's dragged a bit at the natural wood. So sand again to get rid of any sort of lifted splinters. And then I finished this off, the slats and the top, um, with some clear wax. And this is actually a clear shoe polish, but you could use clear um, furniture wax. And just apply a small amount of a piece of um, kitchen towel and then just apply it to the wood in small circular motions. And you'll actually see it soaking in. And don't forget to go along the sides. And it just gives it this lovely um, sort of honey colour. Just finishes it off really nicely. And then finally, I'm going to make the towel rail. So measure between the towel rail holders. And cut a cocktail stick um, to size, so cut the pointed end off measure and then trim it to size and then just apply a tiny blob of glue to each end and then we're fitting it so that it's sitting in this straight um, end just above that curve And then that should be a nice snug fit and then you can press those together and just make sure that it's roughly in the same place again measure if you need to I'll just do it by eye check that it's straight in line with the uh, table top there and just remove any excess glue from around the edges while you're sort of holding it into place and there's the completed work table I hope you've enjoyed this project if so please do subscribe there's lots more to come I've just started a really exciting series on the channel as well, My Doll's House Diary, where I'm going to be redecorating and furnishing my doll's house from top to bottom. And I'll be sharing lots of tutorials. And for now, thank you for watching.